activities. In other news, Italian authorities are set to begin an inquiry into the cause of a cable car accident that's left 14 dead and seriously injured a child. Israel's foreign ministry said in a statement that it had been informed by authorities that five of its nationals were among the dead and one Israeli was in a critical condition. More than a dozen people died and at least three were seriously injured in Italy on Sunday when a cable car linking Lake Maggiore with a nearby mountain in the Alps plunged to the ground. The Stressa Matarone cable car carries tourists and local people from the town of Stressa almost 1,400 meters above sea level to the top of Matarone mountain. Marcella Severino, Stress's mayor, told a national broadcaster that the accident happened as the cable car was traveling up the mountain. The cabin dropped some 20 meters and rolled several times down the steep slopes before it was stopped by trees. Coroners had started identifying the victims, who included foreign nationals, she said, without giving further details. A spokesperson for Italy's Alpine Rescue Service told a local broadcaster that two children had been transported by helicopter to a pediatric hospital in the nearby northern city of Turin. The Stressa Matarone lift had only recently reopened following the gradual lifting of coronavirus restrictions. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi voiced his condolences to the families of the victims with a special thought for the wounded children. Well, Eugenia will be back with you in a short while with your Asia business update, including Thailand's unemployment rate hitting a 12-year high. Plus, Phil Mickelson makes history, proving that you are never too old to win on the biggest stage. From the top stories in Asia. A quicker, portable way of testing for COVID-19 in just five minutes. To breaking news in the U.S. and Europe. U.S. President-elect Joe Biden is set to formally introduce his top economic team. With an eye on markets opening across the world. Wall Street's major indices all close the month with double-digit percentage gains. It's the one bulletin that offers you a global perspective. World Tonight, daily, on CNA. There was a huge manhunt for this man. Podcast producer Rovick Roberts investigates a mysterious murder from the past. This is a spicy case. Spicy, spicy. To understand how Singapore turned from a city of vice. Singapore was a Chicago of the East. Clashes and shootings were rampant. Into one of the safest in the world. When the killing started, holy smoke, it was a game changer. Into the Vault 3, Wednesday on CNA. What are the financial forces driving Asia's rise? From transnational business expansions and technology for digital growth to untapped opportunities in the region and beyond, understand the trends, innovations and corporate deals that are Building Asia. On Asia First, Monday mornings on CNA. Looking at us with his eyes wide open. Oh, it's so cute. I'm Shushan, and in this series, I'll be tracking into hidden parts of Singapore. Oh my god, catch us! To find out what's being done to save our biodiversity. Every animal plays a significant role. And if we're running out of time. It seems that there is an uptrend in number of road kills. It's in our nature. Video on demand on CNA.asia. Have fun while breaking a sweat on your next visit to Gangnam. Enjoy the weightlessness of bungee fitness. Or learn the health benefits of pole dancing. So don't miss the opportunity to feel the burn with the latest workout trends in Korea. Gangnam Insider's Picks, Sunday on CNA. This program is brought to you by the Gangnam Goo Office. To understand the Philippines, one must understand the Filipino people, scattered throughout more than 7,000 islands, resilient, fighting for better lives, even if it means making a living thousands of kilometers away from home. Their faith and sense of community keep them strong in the face of adversities. 
the Filipino spirit of Bayanihan never wanes. And this is new. Is in Thailand, the unemployment rate hit a 12-year high of 1.96% in the first quarter of this year, in the wake of uh, tightening measures to fight a third wave of infections. Officials say they expect the unemployment rate to rise again. In Thailand, the official definition of being unemployed is rather narrow. It includes only those who do not work a single hour in the surveyed week and excludes those with a business or owning farms. While the jobless rate rose, the number of employed workers, however, inched ahead, up by 0.4% on year. And that's due to high employment in the agricultural sector. Just last week, the state planning agency cut its growth outlook for this year to a range of between 1.5 and 2.5 percent. Indonesia is considering an alternative minimum tax approach for companies to prevent tax avoidance. It's part of sweeping tax reforms that the finance minister laid out in parliament. Sri Mulyani Indrawati says the tax reforms are meant to create fairness and equality for companies. Amongst the other changes, she plans to introduce a new upper band for individual income taxes. That's to charge 35% for a portion of income for those earning more than 5 billion rupiah a year. It amounts to almost 350,000 US dollars. Small and medium-sized companies in Hong Kong are struggling. A recent survey suggests that business confidence there is at its lowest level for two years running. And some firms are pushing for people in the territory to get inoculated against COVID-19 as vaccine hesitancy has taken hold. But as Roland Lim tells us, they also want more help from the government. <laughs> Ray O, oh, who once led Hong Kong's Muay Thai team in international competition, is trained in the school of hard knocks. But not since running his own Muay Thai and fitness gym for the past 10 years has business been hit so hard. Fitness centres like O's were closed for nearly seven out of the past 12 months in a bid to stop the spread of the coronavirus. <laughs> Oh, who is also the convener of the Fitness and Combat Sports Alliance, representing more than 200 gym operators, estimates that more than a third of gyms in the territory are permanently down for the count, despite an earlier government subsidy to save jobs. During the tough times, Oh stayed afloat by increasing promotions for private and group classes, slashing prices in a bid to get more customers by word of mouth. It has worked, and business has gradually improved these past two months since the government relaxed restrictions at gyms again. Businesses have suffered a great blow because of COVID-19 this past 12 months. According to one recent survey by CPA Australia, confidence is at its lowest level two years running among all Asian Pacific cities surveyed, and that only 21% of small businesses expect to expand this year. More than $1.2 billion of relief measures have been dished out by the government in its latest budget for small and medium-sized enterprises, including extra funds for companies to diversify their markets. Hong Kong Small and Medium Enterprises Association President Pamela Mark says measures like the government's full guarantee loan scheme would be a much-needed shot in the arm for struggling businesses during the tough patch. Mark runs a wholesale and retail wine business and opened her outlet in Yunlong, a township next to the Chinese border because more than half of her customers were from the mainland. 
These visitors have since dried up, as the city has yet to reopen its borders to Chinese tourists. That's why.